So I'll just have a presentation up in a sec. Awesome. So a little introduction. So we're a company called Clearbot. We're based actually out of Bangalore and Hong Kong. Those are our two offices. And what we do is we basically make uh, electric self-driving boats. And one of the things they're being used for is automatic high synth cleanup. And I understand high synth is a huge problem, especially here in Kerala, right? So hopefully today we'll talk a little about kind of what we're doing and, and how it works. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, so we start with the problem, right? High synth is a huge, huge problem in, in Kerala. Uh, not only in Kerala, to be honest, all over the world. Uh, basically, you have fertilizer, surface runoff, goes into the water, and kind of creates the perfect conditions for these plants to grow, uh, which makes the waterways unusable. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, next slide. Yeah. So at our company, we believe that the balance between humanity and the, the sort of environment is broken. And our mission is to try and rebuild that relationship. Uh, next slide. Um, and what we saw today in the market is these kind of solutions, right? So you might have seen these. Uh, most of the existing solutions, um, first of all, they, they're either using excavators or right directly, uh, or they're using these kind of high synth collection boats. Uh, but these boats run on petrol or diesel, which itself makes it very polluting. So while cleaning up pollution, you are creating pollution, which I think is kind of defeating the purpose. Uh, but also they are uh, expensive to operate and they require a lot of maintenance. So diesel petrol engines require a lot of maintenance to run. Um, so next slide. So we started our journey uh, about three years ago in Bali in Indonesia. And we started interviewing actually a lot of people to understand the problems and the kind of solutions that are being used. Next slide. And over a three year development process, so our first boats, they weren't even boats, they were like some toys we put together. Uh, but we started off about roughly two, three years ago trying to build these. Next slide. And finally today, this is our solution. Um, so today we build our machine in partnership with Razer, which is a Singaporean gaming company. And we basically replace these old kind of gasoline powered boats with cheaper, cleaner, greener machines. Uh, next slide. And our boats can be used for not only high synth cleaning, so removing trash, so that's this garbage, which itself is a massive problem, usually associated with high synth. Uh, we're doing foam cleaning, oil cleaning, cargo, uh, as well as inspections and surveys in unsafe areas. Um, next slide. So with regard to Hyacinth, uh, these are the kind of boats we have. And actually, every month, we keep increasing the size and capacity of our boats because we see bigger and bigger uh, Hyacinth uh, contracts coming in. Uh, so this is in Hong Kong, and that is here in Kerala. In fact, at Marine Drive only. Uh, a couple of months back, we were doing our trials. Uh, next slide, please. So there's a short video here, and you kind of see how the machine goes in. So we use a camera to detect where the Hyacinth is. The machine learning algorithm drives the boat to the region. We have a conveyor belt inside the boat, so it kind of sucks up and eats up all the hyacinth. And then it's stored on the boat itself. And this entire process is without any manpower. You can sit, you can sit in the US and drive a boat in Kerala easily, no problem. Uh, no pollution, it's fully electric, it runs remotely, and it can be charged with a solar panel as well, so zero emissions. And uh, we, we basically go in a zigzag to clean all the hyacinth up. And it's able to pick up 10 kgs every two minutes. Um, in fact, our newest version is going to be double the size of this. So that way we have a much larger machine and we can collect more waste, more hyacinth in a single run. Next slide, please. Um, so we are now developing a docking station as well, which means when the boat comes back, it will be able to keep the waste automatically in the same location. Uh, and that means the operator is not required to unload the waste as well. Uh, and on top of that, these boats are better for the environment. And if you're a contractor doing this work, it's better for business. So the electric solution is much cheaper to operate on a monthly basis. And we also offer a rental model. So the biggest problem with electric boats is it's capital intensive. You need to invest to buy the boat first. But with our machines, we offer a rental model. So you don't need to take the risk, uh, capital risk. And you can directly start using our machine. Uh, next slide, please. This is our control dashboard. Uh, we can show you a live demo of this at our booth at B2. Uh, but basically, you can just drop the waypoints of the area you want to clean up. And our boat goes automatically and cleans it up. Um, the boat also has a live video feed, so you can see exactly what is happening. If there's any other boat in the region, it'll give you a warning and tell you that, OK, there's an obstacle in the way. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we're also using a bit of machine learning on our boat. So machine learning, with machine learning, we're able to identify objects very easily. This is the core advantage. So for example, if we're cleaning hyacinth or if we're cleaning waste, we are actually able to use the cameras to quantify exactly how much we are able to clean up. And so at the end of our operation, there's very high levels of transparency. People are able to find out, OK, how much was cleaned up today? What is the total area coverage? And we give the report directly to our clients via online dashboard. 
Next slide, please. Uh, the boats are manufactured now fully in India. We are built out of Bangalore. So we are also looking for support in uh, sub actually building these boats. So we are building bigger and bigger boats. And we are uh, incapable of not doing that ourselves. So we are looking for boat suppliers to help us to do this. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, just covering some quick use cases. So this is the Hyacinth cleanup. This particular project is in Hong Kong. Next slide. And we are helping the Hong Kong government uh, in the water pumping station. So their water pumping station has Hyacinth getting stuck uh, in it. And so we are using that behind the dam. Basically, they have a dam. Behind the dam, all the Hyacinth collects up. So we're using our machine to clean it out. So this project has about three boats, and they run three times a week. And they basically keep it clean throughout the year. So even though it's a seasonal problem, they basically said, OK, keep the boats here, run them through the year. Whenever there's an issue, we'll use your machine. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the next pilot. We're doing this in Kerala. Actually, uh, this is the boat that's on display here uh, this week. And this boat will go to Trivandrum, where we're doing our pilot. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we've done the pilot initially first in Kochi itself, and we are trialing out. So India is a slightly different environment. It's hotter. There's more hyacinth. And uh, so we are making some modifications now to our machine, uh, specifically for India. And the idea is that a team of one to two people can control a fleet of five boats and keep the water clean throughout the year, able to run a maintenance kind of project. Uh, next slide. So this is our newest design. This will be uh, released in April. It's basically an extension of our current model. And it has brushes in the front to break the hyacinth, because sometimes we have hyacinth is very thick. So we're able to break it. And we can then collect it in a floating barge. And this way, if you want to have the operation, just you just switch the barge, and the same boat can keep going out eight hours a day cleaning. Um, and we have 500 kg weight capacity, and the boat can actually tow two tons. So we can increase the capacity if required. Uh, next slide. Uh, so quickly to wrap up, I'll just cover some of the other use cases so you can get an idea. Uh, the same machine can do multiple tasks with so very high value. If with one machine in the off season, even if you're not cleaning hyacinth, it can be used to do waste cleanup. Next slide. So we're doing waste cleanup projects. Uh, so next slide. We're doing waste cleanup projects with marinas uh, to collect waste out in uh, sort of where it collects in the corners. Next slide. We are doing foam and oil cleaning uh, for the government. Next slide. Where in the water treatment plants, there's a lot of foam. It collects, and they have to manually go in a boat and clean it. But with our machine, it's fully automated. They can just send the machine, and it goes out every day. And again, the machine learning gives the result, the report, every day to the client. Next slide. And finally, in any kind of uh, marine construction area. So next slide. We are seeing a lot of projects now in marine construction where basically there's some unsafe area, like sewage areas or canals. It's unsafe to send a human being, or the human beings don't want to go. In this case, we can send the boat. You put all the sensing equipment, cameras, sensors on the boat, and the boat can go in under the steel beams on the tunnel, do the inspection, and come back without creating any dang uh, dangerous situation for anyone. Next slide. Um, so yeah, these are our partners and clients. Uh, we are uh, Pan Asia now, focusing on India. And next slide. Uh, this is some of the this is, slides a bit messy, but this is some of the technical information. Uh, but feel free to reach out to me. Next slide. Uh, my contact details are available at the bottom, or I'm up here on stage. So yeah, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Um, we have one more speaker for this session, but uh, he has not arrived yet. Um, so while, while we wait for that uh, speaker, um, we'll use the time to take up some questions, quick questions um, uh, for this uh, two talks that we had now. So the floor is open for questions. If uh, anybody have any questions, uh, please. Yeah, so may I invite uh, the two speakers, Mr. Uh, Joy Jacob and uh, Mr. Sush uh, Siddhant Gupta, to the stage, please. So from the audience, uh, so now it's time for questions as we wait for the third speaker. Hello, good evening. Uh, regarding the clear board, what will be the initial capital for the uh, what will be the capital investment for the uh, for purchasing this clear board? Yeah. Hi. 
Hi, so to answer your question, um, actually at the moment we are trying not to sell the boats. We rent the boats out uh, to our clients anywhere between 1.5 lakhs a month to 5 lakhs a month, depending on the size of the boat use case, how many sensors they need, everything, and the, and the length of the project, length of the contract. Uh, in terms of buying the boat, we are only selling the boat to kind of distributors because the concern is that uh, they may not have the technical expertise to do the maintenance, right? So if we sell the boat, we need to make sure the client is trained and able to maintain. So uh, if you're interested in buying it directly, please talk to me. And then, you know, we, we basically figure out if it's capable, they're capable to maintain and then do that. But otherwise, we rent the boat out on a service basis. Uh, any other questions? Uh, so, uh, uh, Siddhant, um, I have a couple of questions uh, um, for your clear board. Um, uh, you mentioned about that uh, operating it in the, uh, like it's like, it works like a remote control, this thing. Is it working in a remote control or it's a, is it autonomous? Uh, like you plan, you have a mission fed into the system and then it goes and complete the mission and comes back or is it remotely controlled by some operators sitting somewhere uh, when you are doing uh, these uh, missions in, in, in so actually we have both options available uh, you can you can put a prefed mission in fact when we say autonomous mode basically we predefine the gps location of the area we clean we feed the mission in and the boat goes out and does it on its own we also have the option that somebody can sit and drive it remotely. So some of our clients prefer this. For example, in marine construction, they don't want the boat to be autonomous. They want the supervisor to be looking at the boat, driving the boat at all times. So depending on the client, we actually have both options available. And uh, you can like switch the sensors. Uh, like uh, if you are using it for hazard collection, you'll be using a different sort of sensor. Like how does it know that whether it is uh, plant or uh, some debris or waste or something like that? So actually the, the equipment on the boat is mostly the same, especially for trash and hyacinth. Any surface cleanup is all the same equipment. Uh, we just tell it on the software. We have a dashboard so we can define what it has to do. So when we feed the mission, we also define what it has to do and then it kind of goes and does that. We only change the equipment and the sensors if we are doing inspection, for example, or we're doing seabed survey then we need to change the equipment on board to actually do that project, yeah. Thank you. Any, any questions from the audience? Um, so my question to um, uh, Mr. Joy Jacob, uh, you mentioned about eco-friendly uh, materials, uh, but then uh, the list of materials that you have uh, presented uh, is con conventional materials that we are using today, right? Um, so um, I was just kind of curious what's new, what's a new finding or new thing that you have to uh, bring up to the um, public. So basically, the new developments, as we discuss about the different type of raw materials we have used so far, the final outcome is fiberglass as widely used because of the, its a flexibility to mold, um, build and maintain side also. Fiberglass is the best material used for in the era. But uh, when we are considering about the um, um, corrosion site, that is a uh, non corrosion is the problem now. We can't dispose, we can't uh, dispose the material. That is the um, concern of uh, the present era. That is the reason uh, people are uh, quite uh, afraid of going for uh, fiberglass because. That is a, is a sustainable, lifelong. We, they can't re remove, um, um, destroy the item. So, another problem is a, it's a, a recyclability also not possible for fiberglass. These are the things consider 
in the new development of uh, 